Season 7 is here, let's talk about all the changes that Boroshiki brought to Naruto to Boruto Shinobi Striker. What actual impact does all of it have on the range class and how does it affect the meta? In this video, you're gonna find out what all these changes mean for you as a player and also why the range class itself might actually have been nerfed even more through this update. Because there are also some changes that they just didn't tell us about in the patch notes, so you definitely want to watch the whole thing because that's actually some very important stuff that you have to know about when playing this game. Leaf Flash brings you closer to enemies now. This Jutsu oftentimes would struggle to hit a target that is moving or in the air. It still isn't as accurate as Leaf Rising, but you will have less situations where you don't hit your target although you're in range. They slightly toned down the tracking and speed buff of Teleportation Jutsu. You now have less speed and range on your charge attack and are a little bit slower overall, but it's still an absolutely amazing Jutsu. The cooldown of Almighty Push went from 11 up to 14 seconds, which is great. I think they absolutely nailed that one. 14 seconds is just point blank perfect for this Jutsu in my opinion. So basically the whole default meta build got nerfed, but not to a point where the build or the Jutsus themselves aren't good anymore or anything. I think they now found a good balance with those two. Even after the nerf, both are still extremely useful and go well with a lot of jutsus and game modes. The cooldown of Flying Raijin level 2 got reduced to only 12 seconds and the kunai is supposed to have better tracking now, but to be honest I didn't really notice any of that. The lower cooldown is pretty nice though. They also reduced the time it takes to activate certain jutsus, especially but not only from a lot of hand sign jutsus by just making them weave the hand signs faster for the most part. In the attack class they reduced the activation time of Acrobat Technique and Firestyle Burning Ash. Probably the biggest buff for the attack class is that Youthful Raw has a way bigger range now. And when I say way bigger, I mean way bigger, okay? This thing is huge, much much larger than its animation actually. Okay, this Jutsu is going to provide insane crowd control now, it only has a 13 second cooldown, it buffs the melee damage of you and your allies and removes debuffs. So it's really useful because it allows you to counter any anti-heal, defense drops, movement speed reduction, damage over time effect, any kind of debuff really, even ultimates like vapor fog or insect jamming. It also counters charring gun, time space hop and other kamui like effects, stuff like flame formation to a degree, you can use it as a great combo extender, just one of the best support moves we have in the game right now. The range class had the most jutsus that had their activation time reduced. I didn't really see that much of a difference on flame bombs or fireball jutsu, but you feel it a bit more on phoenix claw and scarlet claw. But severing wave benefits the most from it. You don't really need that much setup for it anymore and it can deal so much damage for just an 11 second cooldown jutsu. It lowers defense, breaks guard and shield type jutsus and is just so much easier to aim freely in a fast paced teamfight. Great Breach went down to a 12 second cooldown which is nice for base and the overall team DPS. The Jutsu goes through walls, lowers attack tracking ability and because it is a win style move it provides anti heal to the team, which makes it a whole lot easier to kill enemies if used at the right time. I actually think it's a pretty underrated Jutsu. Super Beast Scroll Vert now has a lower ninjutsu cancelling ability, it's basically on the same level as the standard fireball jutsu now. So with most jutsus if they make contact they just neutralize each other now instead of the bird going through and destroying the enemy jutsu in the process. C4 Karura now lets you place the clone faster and will explode earlier while also having its range increase. You can still get out of it easily even if they use a charge attack first so you will still need a setup move for it to get a safe kill. You basically still just use it to get a single kill or force people off a base. With these quality of life improvements it just feels a little bit smoother now. Same thing for Totsuga Blade. It activates a bit faster and you do the sword attack a bit earlier. It's nice I guess, but it doesn't make a huge difference or anything. Heaven Concealed now drops the Meteor a bit faster, but to be honest it still won't hit shit. Because just like with Karura, you can get hit with a charge attack and still just walk right out of it, grab a coffee on your way and still have 3 hours left before the Meteor will finally hit the ground. The biggest buff for range types this update is that you now get more old charge from your ninja tool. This is an overall really nice buff, but it's gonna be completely broken if you pair it with Crystal Ice Mirrors, because it was already charging extremely fast, especially if you run something like Senbon that already have really high damage, and pair that with increased ninja tool damage and reduced ninja tool cooldown on your clothing perks, maybe throw in a defense drop from one of your jutsus, and yeah, you're just gonna farm old charge like crazy. 
If you have the outfit that gives you bonus ult charge and ninja tool damage, pair that with the accessory that gives you bonus ult charge on 15 or more hits. You can just block somebody's sub with a phoenix flower jutsu, lead into the flame lightning, dash out of it at the end to follow up with the crimson star and farm ult charge easily. You do this twice and you have your ultimate. The ult itself procs the accessory too, so you get like 40 to 60% ult charge back from just using the ult based on how many players you hit with it. And from that point on it's really just doing the combo once after your ult to have your ult back again. And nothing stops you from having one or two healers on your team that further buff your ult charge with lightning boulder or the long distance healing ultimate. Even just your regular heavy attacks will generate a lot of ult charge, so if your enemy has super armor, you can just farm good ult charge on them as well. So be careful with super armored moves when fighting against range types, especially if they are running Angelic Advent. Because not only can they farm a shit ton of damage on you, they are theoretically able to farm their full ult off of one Angelic Advent. Yep, Crystal Ice Mirrors is completely broken right now. But the range class also received a giant nerf. You know, the range types always have been the perfect counters against defense types. They are faster and can keep them at a distance so it's hard for them to catch up. Especially since the super armored heavy attacks could be interrupted by kunais and other stuff. But they changed that with this update. That's actually one of the things I was talking about that was not part of the patch notes. You can't cancel a defense type's heavy attack like that anymore. So although this is a buff for the defense class that makes it harder to control them for all classes, range types suffer the most from this. Because with their heavy attacks not being able to interrupt them anymore, the best counter against defense types lost one of its best tools against them. You now have to use jutsus or tools that can break super armor to be able to stop defense types from just foo-stepping you to death with constant super armor. But that also means that every defense type out there should learn how to make more out of his heavy attacks to really benefit from that buff. Foo-stepping for example is an advanced combo cancel that allows you to loop the heavy attacks of weapons like the longsword or the enraster staff faster and connect them into one super armored infinite combo. You put a hand sign ninjutsu on your left side and you just press triangle L1, R2 plus triangle simultaneously, L1, R2 plus triangle and so on. What happens is that you cancel out of your heavy after hitting the opponent, holding down the jutsu button and since it is a hand sign jutsu, you can cancel the hand signs using R2. So if you press R2 and triangle together, you can directly go into the next heavy. You just need to get a feel for the rhythm. It's not that complicated, it's actually very easy, it's just three buttons. Triangle, L1, R2, triangle, L1, R2, triangle, L1, R2, triangle, you got it. But it's not the only really impactful buff for the defense class, because they also reduce the activation time of Earthstyle Bullet Dragon by a significant amount. The devs are low-key delusional if they thought it's a good idea to buff Earthstyle Bullet Dragon. Out of all Jutsus, why would you take one that already is one of the best, most meta moves in the entire game? Serious question to the developers right now. Are you guys out of your fucking mind buffing Earthstyle Bullet Dragon? Stop it. Get some help. The problem with the lower activation time is that the Jutsu itself doesn't have that many counters. There's really not that much you can do against it and most of the things that you can use to play around it can be countered by Strange Taste, Cooling Breeze and a whole lot of other moves. One of the best things you could do if you have to deal with this on base is to keep track of its cooldown a bit and be ready to interrupt them with something that can break super armor while they are trying to place it. I would usually just punish them for it with a Glimmering Flames or Paralysis Jutsu or something and then try to take them out of the fight. So basically the best counter against it is to not let them place it at all. But that is way more difficult now since it's placed so much faster. It's really more of a defense type season than a range type season so far. Grand Sand Mausoleum does a little bit more damage now. You still need a Black Rain outfit or a Kamui or another ninja to damage buff to be able to make it a safe one-shot ability that can just clear up an entire base and leave them on extended respawn timers. But more damage is more damage I guess, I'm not gonna complain. Dome wall comes out a bit faster too and also has a longer range now. The increase is only in front of the dome, not on the sides and the range of the actual hit is way bigger than what the dome wall looks like. You can perfectly see it right here, that's about the max range it has right now. It's kinda similar to how they did it with Youthful Rope. They changed the size of the hitbox but not of the animation. So both are bigger than they look like. I hope they'll adjust that someday. They decreased the activation time of Shark Bomb and increased its ninjutsu cancelling ability. So Inkbird went one level down and Shark Bomb one up, so they are basically on the same level now. Those buffs make it easier to use the Jutsu as a defensive tool to counter charge attacks or block incoming Jutsus with a lower priority. 
They also lowered the activation time of Spiked Human Boulder, Thunderclap Arrow, Dragon Flame Bomb, Snake Thrust and Boruto Stream. Mostly just minor adjustments, but for Boruto Stream it actually makes a big difference, because that means you have a smaller window now to interrupt them before completing the hand signs. And if you don't manage to interrupt them using a Senbon or something, they can basically have infinite subs if they want. You know, since it is a hand sign jutsu, you can cancel it before you release the jutsu without it going on cooldown. And Boruto Stream counts as released when you do the Rasengan. The sub slash stun you do before the Rasengan is actually just a buff you get while holding down the hand signs. So you can use that to have infinite subs or stuns if you just use an L2 dash right when your character makes contact with an enemy or an attack to stun them or dodge and have no cooldown because you cancelled before the Rasengan. And faster hand signs also mean that you now have a bigger window in which you can keep multiple people stunned with one Boruto stream user. It's pretty broken, but it's something you can do if you hit two people at once or one after another if they are not too far away from each other. And while you keep them stunned, your mates can fight a 3v2. On flag or base, two Boruto stream users and maybe a range type with heavenly hand power who can swap them in one by one are enough to theoretically keep all four enemy players stunned for the whole match while the other teammate can play the objective for free. And please, to all the clans out there, don't go out and do this to a bunch of low levels just to teabag them for 7 minutes straight in the flag battle. You literally ruin the game and have serious mental health issues. Feather Illusion and Insect Jamming Technique have a lower cooldown now. I think it's nice for Feather Illusion, but it's gonna be insane for Insect Jamming. Insect Jamming already had a very fast charge rate and I'm gonna tell you that it's massively underrated. The defense drop on the whole enemy team is insane. If you have teammates with high burst damage or just high DPS in general, you can just use this to one-shot people left, right, center. You can bring a slug for more defense drops, Byakugan or Flower Cannon for more damage buffs and with the defense drops from the ult, it's crazy how easy and fast you can wipe whole teams. Everybody just slapping on one in a million to get cooldown reduce off of kills and be able to chain them together and completely steamroll enemies. It's a win button basically. The only thing you have to keep in mind is that you can counter it with moves that remove debuffs. So you have to wait for enemies to use stuff like cellular extraction or the slug which would remove the debuff and just ult right after they used it. And if the enemy team is filled with stuff that can remove status elements, shadow clone tools, youthful raw, master of medicine pill etc, then that's just not the right scenario. The ult won't do nothing so just switch it out in that case. But outside of that it's really effective. Most of the time it's just one or two skills on the enemy team that you can just wait out and ult after. So yeah, don't underestimate it. And then they also reduced the cooldown of the ceiling due to string light formation and increased its range. Another underrated move, it never has been bad, you will stun people and empty their sub. Yeah, it didn't have a big range or anything, but it was enough to cover a base and also way enough to use it in a combo to reset combo counter and sub lock for a safe kill, or to use it defensively when getting jumped or countering a move like Hazan Strike for example. It comes out quick, even charges faster than before, although it already was one of the fastest ults, and has a way bigger range now. You can use it to get a quick kill, provide setup or control enemies and also to deny or clear a base. So yeah, say what you want, it was not one of the best ults or anything, but still pretty underrated and with the new buffs it's actually pretty decent. They also slightly reduced the activation time of Lava Style, Lava Dissolving Jutsu and increased the range of Heavy Boulder. Which also has been a strong move already, it's quick, has super armor, breaks guard, buffs defense, debuffs enemy movement speed, tracking and evasion distance and has a long hit stun that gets enemies to the ground, which is nice for combos and all of that, while having decent damage and cooldown. If they don't have a quick move to specifically counter or dodge it, you only have to be in range to get their sub 100% guaranteed, because either they block it and you get a guard break, or they get hit by it and have to sub because you could do a combo off of it. So increasing the range of it is actually huge. I was glad to find out that they didn't increase the range that much at least. You are now faster while having Truth Seeker Orbs active. It may not look like that much, but moves like Truth Seeker Orb or Spiked Human Boulder scale with movement speed. So if you have increased movement speed on your clothes, and maybe even another speed buff from Lightning Boulder or the high speed movement substitution, or even from accessories, you're just zooming around like a Dragon Ball character. Especially if you have multiple buffs active at the same time. That speed is really beyond good and evil, man. Another thing that was not on the patch notes is that projectiles don't break the super armor from the Master of Medicine pill anymore. It's great to see that they finally fixed that and the pill is actually viable now. The last thing on our list is the Stone Clone substitution. It now gives you a little movement speed after your sub. You will get the buff as soon as the clone explodes and it doesn't really last for that long, but having a 25 second cooldown sub that gives you a speed boost, removes the tracking for a second because of the clone left behind and also can potentially debuff somebody is not bad at all. 
It may not be the best clone we have, but it's one of the better ones now. Really not a bad choice. Defense and range types are definitely the winners of this update. The change to the heavy of the defense types is kind of a big hit against the range class specifically, but with the higher old charge and the new Boroshiki DLC, they really can't complain too much about it. If you think this video was helpful, leave me a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and never forget, if it has a health bar, it has to die.